Okay, I guess uh, we can get started. Uh, let me quickly check. I guess we are also live uh, on the YouTube site. Uh, all right, so making the last checks really quickly. Yeah, everything looks good uh, on my side. So uh, welcome everyone uh, to the first lecture on um uh on the pns channels uh course i'm quickly checking one more thing i guess let's see there's a small i guess latency issue on my site i hope it's not reflected on the live stream all right but anyway so let's get started i guess this is gonna get better uh uh, yeah, then I guess welcome everyone again. Uh, uh, this is the first lecture uh, to the PNS uh, genomics courses. Um, uh, today we're going to cover uh, essentially the the uh, the, the basics uh, to the genome analysis, as well as the uh, course introduction and also the scope uh, of this of this course. Um, yeah. Uh, so I'll start with uh, a brief uh, self-introduction. Uh, so I'm the uh, lead mentor and also the lecturer uh, of this course. Uh, I am John. I am a PhD student uh, at Safari Research Group, uh, led by Professor Honor Mutlu. Uh, so we are at ETH Zurich, uh, essentially. So my research interests mainly cover uh, the bioinformatics and computer architecture uh, topics. Uh, more specifically, uh, uh, I'm mainly interested in real-time genome analysis, uh, similar to search in general in a large, large space of genomic data, uh, hardware algorithm co-design to accelerate genome analysis, uh, genome editing, and also the error correction of, of sequencing data. Uh, you can get to know us, uh, our group, our research, uh, 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 visiting our website. Uh, you can also contact me using my Gmail address. Uh, this is also my uh, personal uh, academic uh, website. So you can visit that website to, to check the latest, uh, essentially updates, updates uh, regarding my research. And also you can uh, follow me on Twitter or I guess recently, uh, known as uh, X. So what are we going to cover today? Our agenda for today is, is to, I guess, provide the goal of this course. Uh, we're going to be uh, briefly covering the entire content of our weekly lectures. And also we'll be covering uh, uh, what we expect from students, mainly the course logis logistics and also details about how we expect students to communicate with mentors. Uh, then we're briefly going to have a very short introduction to genome analysis. So then let's briefly cover the role of this course, the goal of this course. So what is what is essentially, the, what, what, what are we essentially aiming in, in teaching this course? So our, we have two main courses, uh, goals. Uh, our first goal is essentially to enable uh, students to understand the computational steps and the challenges in genome analysis. And building on top of these understanding of, of the challenges and, and also the steps, we also want students to learn how to overcome these challenges with software and also hardware software co-design solutions. So to this end, uh, every semester we offer uh, 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 two uh, project and seminar or PNS uh, courses, but in short, we call them PNS genomics courses. And uh, usually there are two aspects of, of this particular course. One uh, is the weekly lectures that we will be covering the basics of uh, genome analysis to understand the computational steps of, of the entire genome analysis pipeline. So these lectures are going to be on YouTube, uh, only on YouTube. And uh, uh, and essentially, although these lectures are optional to follow, we strongly encourage students to, to follow these lectures. Uh, 
And also, the I guess the main part of this course is also the the uh, the hands-on projects uh, that the students are going to be working with mentors. So with these projects, the students are going to have the chance to experimentally evaluate the different heuristic algorithms, let's say, uh, as well as the hardware solutions uh, to observe the effects of, of such algorithmic changes or, or the hardware software code designs, uh, essentially their effects to the, to the end result of, of genome analysis, let's say. Um, and, and essentially this evaluation will give the students uh, the chance to carry out a hands-on project uh, by implementing one or more of these heuristics algorithms. Uh, for example, in computationally constrained resources, for example, mobile phones, uh, uh, hopefully to help the society by enabling on-site analysis of genomic data. Of course, this is an example, uh, but I guess one very important aspect, aspect of, of essentially improving the, the speed and accuracy of genome analysis is, is basically helping the society uh, substantially, right? With, with uh, critical analysis of, of genomic data. Uh, we have uh, multiple key objectives uh, in teaching this course. For example, by the end of this semester, we hope that the students are going to improve their basic knowledge in genome analysis, as well as their technical skills in, in, in genome analysis and also in computer architecture, essentially not just genome analysis because we have some uh, projects that are also focusing on, on designing, let's say, uh, hardware, uh, essentially co-designing hardware and software together by uh, considering the constraints on the hardware side as well. Uh, also, uh, the students are going to be uh, improving their critical thinking and analysis skills because they're going to be discussing uh, uh, new ideas with their mentors. Uh, and they'll also get familiar with the key research directions in the field because we're going to be building on top of the uh, top of the state of the art works, let's say. So with that, they're going to essentially have the understanding of 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 the cutting edge, let's say, uh, directions in in genome analysis. And the students are going to be also presenting at the end of the semester. So this means that they're going to be improving their technical presentation skills. Uh, by presenting their projects. So as I said, uh, we're offering two courses this semester and essentially every semester. One is PNS Mobile Genomics course and the other one is Accelerating Genomics course. So although the title and the content, uh, essentially only the title is different, but I guess uh, we're mainly offering the uh, same content for both courses. Uh, uh, the goal for both of these courses are essentially the same, carrying out a project and also optionally following these weekly lectures uh, to improve, I guess, uh, the basic knowledge in, in, in genome analysis. Uh, so both of these courses are project-based courses, uh, which will hopefully help uh, students to understand and improve the cutting, uh, their understanding uh, uh, basically, and also improving the cutting cutting edge techniques. Uh, they're going to be uh, doing hands-on research exploration with their mentors, and uh, we're going to have essentially weekly lectures on on genomics. Uh, those are going to be on YouTube. Uh, so, by essentially doing all of these projects and following the lectures, hopefully, students are going to improve their research and presentation skills at the end. So there are some prerequisites of this course, uh, but one important, I guess, uh, thing to mention is that we don't really require a prior knowledge in bioinformatics or genome analysis. Uh, hopefully students are going to be building that knowledge throughout this course by following the lectures and also discussing with their mentors. But what we require is mainly an interest in optimizing the efficiency and, and also solving complex uh, problems uh, 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 in, in bioinformatics. Uh, we also prefer a basic 
uh, to good knowledge in C or C++ programming language because most of these projects are going to be based on uh, C or C++. Uh, also, if you are working on a, a hardware-related project, I guess uh, if you have taken uh, uh, the digital design and computer architecture courses or an equivalent course, essentially, then that will be desirable, essentially, because then you would already have the basic knowledge to start implementing, for example, in Verilog. Uh, so if you already also have an experience in either, let's say, an FPGA implementation or GP programming uh, or basically algorithm design, these are, uh, is, is they are they are essentially highly beneficial, but again, they are not mandatory. Uh, so we have some essentially requirements and expectations uh, so that the students can successfully complete this course. Uh, one thing, again, as I said previously, are the weekly lectures. So although these are optional, we strongly uh, recommend students to follow these lectures because this will enable students to make fast progress also in their projects because they're going to quickly build their uh, basic, let's say, knowledge in, in the area. And the schedule is going to be on the course website. So you, you'll be able to find the YouTube links uh, to watch these lectures live. So there is no Zoom link, essentially. Uh, and if you cannot make it to, to watch it on YouTube, uh, you can always basically uh, uh, watch it later, although you cannot uh, make it to watch it basically live. Um, the another big chunk of this course are essentially the projects. The students are going to be uh, uh, building, implementing, and designing uh, an algorithm and also uh, potentially an, an hardware under close uh, mentor guidance. Uh, we expect students to work approximately six hours uh, per week. Although, like, you don't really have to be working six hours every week, but this is how we. Uh, uh, essentially imagine uh, to make steady, uh, steady progress and also to, to successfully complete the project that the students are expected to, to, to complete, let's say. Uh, but we also know that in some of the weeks, the students are going to be very busy with, with some other coursework, but then I guess it's it is important to, uh, 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 to essentially find the balance uh in the amount of work that the students are putting on on each of the uh course essentially uh and also one important aspect of these uh, uh also one important basically a uh, reason or or um essentially uh way to make a, a, a fast progress or important progress let's say in the in the projects is to regularly meet with the students uh, regularly meet with the mentors. Uh, for example, uh, weekly meetings uh, are very important so that you can communicate with your mentors and also get feedback regarding your progress. So this brings me to also the communication uh, aspect of, of the expectations uh, from, from this course, from the students. So it's important to communicate with your mentors regularly. So you can, to do this, you should be you should be checking the course website regularly, right? Because we may have some announcements. We're releasing the uh, uh, links to the lectures. Uh, you can also find the information about your mentors as well. Uh, also, so as well as the course website, uh, you should be checking the Moodle and uh, Discord and and also your emails. Uh, so it is important to be essentially. Uh, to respond to your mentors timely. Uh, and at the end of the semester, uh, the students are going to be presenting uh, their projects. Uh, so we will require students to prepare some uh, uh, slides to, to show their progress. And also, students, for example, the, their call, their results to our Git repository. So these are all the expectations uh, uh, that we have as mentors from students so that students can uh, successfully complete the, complete the course. 
And if you essentially have a significant progress and also show uh, significantly good results in your project, and if you want to publish those results, uh, we can help you basically to for for publication, which is uh, basically very important if you're target, targeting an, an academic career. Uh, we can help you with that basically. Uh, so how do the project assignments uh, uh, work, and how uh, does the students essentially make progress? throughout the semester. Uh, so we already assigned the projects to the students based on their interests and skills. Uh, we did this by first uh, uh, presenting the projects that the mentors are offering before assigning any projects to the students. And students were able to uh, uh, attend these presentations in person or watch the uh, presentations later on, the recording of the presentations later on, so that they can have an informed decision, basically, about the project that they want to work on. And based on this information, students rank these projects based on their interest. And after ranking these projects, the, uh, we assign uh, these projects accordingly to the students, and then the mentors contact the students to arrange the regular meetings. And as I said, the regular meetings are critical to, to show uh, your progress, basically. So with that, let's cover the mentors uh, in this course. Uh, 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 so I already introduced myself. I'm John, I'm a PhD student, and I'm one of the mentors in this course. Uh, uh, the other mentors are Hayu. Hayu is a postdoc uh, in our group. We also have Nika, she is a PhD student. Uh, Joel is also a PhD student uh, as one of the mentors in our course. Um, Banu is a master student. We also have Melina. She is a, vis a visiting a master student. Um, we also have Arvid and, and Zulal as, as mentors in this course. So all of these mentors are have expertise in uh, different directions of genome analysis and uh, they are going to be helping you essentially with, with the projects uh, you are assigned to. So you're going to be communicating with some of these mentors regularly throughout the semester. Uh, we're going to also be releasing the weekly lectures on YouTube. Uh, the tentative uh, schedule is already on our course page. Uh, so you can check the course page and then see the, this tentative lecture. So you can also find the links to the, to the to the YouTube live stream as, and also links to the, to the slides. Uh, so we have been uh, offering uh, this course for some time. So this is uh, uh, the content from last semester from spring 2023. So these are essentially the links to the course page. And this is also the link to the, uh, 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 to the playlist that includes the, the full list of lectures uh, that we offered last semester as part of the PNS genomics course. Uh, as I said, we've been offering this uh, course for some time uh, since fall 2020. So you can already find all of these links uh, to the previous, uh, basically, uh, 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 um, semesters. So with that, uh, I guess uh, uh, this more or less covers the course logistics, logistics and also uh, uh, our expectations from students. So let's briefly cover uh, essentially the important aspects of, of genome analysis and why we're essentially interested in, in doing genome analysis. Uh, so essentially understanding the genome analysis or understanding the genome itself uh, is extremely important because analysis of a genome can help us to understand the genetic variations, uh, spe species, and also the evolution in the entire population. So we can also predict, quickly predict, hopefully, the presence and also the relative abundance of, let's say, microbes in a sample, especially in cases if, if such species can uh, harm the society. And it's very important, basically, to, to uh, uh, detect such presence very quickly 
uh, and also uh, relatively cheaper uh, by analyzing the genomes. Uh, this can also help us uh, uh, to have the rapid uh, surveillance of, of the disease outbreaks. I guess one uh, such outbreak that we all experienced was the COVID outbreak. And uh, I guess it would have been much quicker if such scalable and portable uh, genome analysis solutions were basically uh, available back then uh, so that we could understand and analyze the genome uh, very quickly, rather than, for example, uh, waiting for the PCR solutions uh, to, to appear, which uh, essentially happened uh, sometime later, I guess. Uh, and understanding the genome and then analyzing the genome is also very important to develop personalized medicine for, for each individual, uh, essentially targeted solutions, right? And we already see that there is an extremely bright future for intelligent genome analysis. Uh, there are unique uh, sequencing solutions that, that help us uh, sequence the genome uh, in a portable manner, let's say. So you can literally carry a handheld device. For example, here, this is a picture from Minayan device, which is a very small, like uh, a size of your hand, let's say. So you can carry it and then even connect it to your uh, desktop machine or even your mobile phone. And then it will hopefully uh, enable you to analyze the genome in a portable manner, also in hopefully relatively cheap uh, and fast way. So we're already covering these solutions in our uh, previous uh, published work. So you can check these papers to, to learn more about them. But of course, this, th there have been a significant process in sequencing the genome, right? So the, the genome itself is a, you can consider it as a nucleic uh, acid molecule, like a biological uh, uh, molecule, right? So it's not really an, in a human readable form. And to put it in a human readable form, we have these sequencing machines that take the genome, let's say, as input, and then as an output, hopefully it will give you uh, uh, um, the sequence of genome in a human readable form. So this can potentially be in the form of ATGCs, or it could be uh, the sequence of uh, proteins or, or RNA or let's say even the electrical signals that correspond to, to these uh, uh, nucleic acids, uh, individual nucleic acids in, in the molecule. Uh, so these are all the examples that uh, we've seen uh, in the past, and some of these are already being used uh, also currently. And as I said, some of these are very small, but while some others are really large, uh, some of them are even uh, as large as, uh, uh, as a small room, let's say. Uh, so we're also focusing on uh, some of these, let's say, uh, uh, um, uh, sequencing solutions that we think that they have a huge potential. And one of these are, are uh, one of one of these solutions is, is nanopore sequencing. Uh, we've published this work that analyzes the uh, the challenges and also the potential solutions uh, that uh, uh, the researchers have been using and proposing. Uh, with nanopore sequencing. So this is the link to this work and you can all you can find all of these links essentially in the slides that we're sharing in our course page. So then I guess we've, we've been discussing this uh, intelligent genome analysis, but let's make it a little bit more concrete. So what is intelligent genome analysis? So it has essentially several aspects and uh, some of these aspects uh, are going to be covered in the slide. So one very important aspect of it is, is to enable fast genome analysis. So we really want to minimize the latency uh, between the first time that we prepare the genome uh, sample and until uh, the time that we get the result that we want. So we really want that uh, uh, latency time to, 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 be minimized, to be minimized so that we can get our answer as quick as possible, because that answer can be life critical, let's say. But we, we may also be analyzing the genome in real time, which may have its own time restrictions. Also, having a fast genome analysis is also important in that aspect. Uh, uh, we also want to be using, let's say, in, uh, intelligent architectures or suitable architectures 
to enable uh, energy efficient and also high bandwidth uh, uh, computation and communication uh, uh, between the processing uh, uh, units and perhaps and memory, right? And to achieve this, we can also uh, design uh, specialized hardware, for example, with less data movements, if, if our goal is to minimize the data movement uh, for that particular uh, application, particular workload. Uh, we also want uh, our solutions uh, to uh, uh, be, let's say, applicable to a larger uh, scale uh, data, essentially. So we want our solutions uh, to be scalable to, for example, to the entire population, right? So the solution itself should not really be uh, applicable to a very small individual genome, but if it is essentially applicable to, uh, to a, a large population, a large collection of data, be still being faster, it is desirable, right? Uh, the, uh, the another important aspect of, of such a genome analysis is we want to avoid erroneous analysis, of course. You really don't want to make incorrect uh, uh, analysis and provide incorrect solutions because such uh, 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 answers or solutions from your analysis can be extremely dangerous for a human health, right? So it is extremely important then to have an acute diag diagnosis of, for example, disease. Uh, otherwise, uh, this can even result in uh, uh, loss of life, uh, even lives, right? This is very critical. And we also know that DNA is a valuable asset. This means that uh, such data should really be analyzed uh, uh, with uh, uh, reliable uh, and, I guess, and secure uh, ways uh, as much as possible, because uh, using the DNA data, uh, I guess those people with, let's say, uh, uh, harmful um, uh, goals, so they can really use that uh, data uh, against you to make uh, essentially harmful decisions for your life, basically. And it is then important to also protect the privacy and security of the DNA data, genomic data in general. For example, recently we've heard this uh, uh, data leakage. Uh, I'm not sure if it is confirmed, but I guess that there was this data leakage from uh, 23andMe. Uh, and this is uh, this can essentially be have the potential to be harmful, I guess, for the for the. Uh, individuals that, that share the data uh, with that particular company. So then let's cover uh, the problem uh, uh, that we have today uh, with genome analysis. But this is essentially almost true for almost any workload uh, that generates a lot of data, let's say. So the main problem is that we have a special purpose machine, which is in our case, uh, a sequencer, right? It takes the genome and it generates lots of data uh, at the end at a very high speed, right? So we're generating that data at a very fast rate. But the problem is that uh, we're using a general purpose machine, uh, for example, uh, uh, essentially uh, uh, computers with commodity hardware, such as GPUs, right, or CPUs. Uh, they are not really designed to, to analyze the, the, the sequencing data, uh, right? Specifically, they are not designed to analyze that particular data because they really don't know uh, basically the bottlenecks and also the, the trend of, of the computation in a sense so that they could build their hardware and also even co-design their software to analyze the, this particular data extremely efficiently in terms of, let's say, energy, also in a very fast way, also by still being accurate. So then this leads to slow and inefficient processing capability uh, with large amounts of data movement across the compute computation stack, right? Um, and when I say computation stack, uh, I literally mean almost the entire step, entire uh, 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 stack in computation almost starting from the electrons 
to the to the uh, uh, computational problem itself, on which is on on the very top of the top of the uh, stack. But in this course, and also in many courses that we're offering, we're literally starting from the devices itself, where we're considering the devices uh, and and essentially analyzing whether that particular device is suitable to solve the problem or the algorithm that we want to uh, solve at the end. And if not, we're uh, designing or essentially changing the device itself to solve that particular problem uh, efficiently and quickly. So that's why it's really important to understand the entire stack of, of computation so that we really touch on every step of this analysis. So it's not always if, uh, uh, um, essentially um, uh, uh, efficient or, or sufficient just to change the architecture or the hardware itself. Uh, we sometimes also need to change the algorithm with the, with the hardware uh, essentially. And this means essentially the core design of uh, algorithm and hardware, right? To, to solve the problem that we want to solve. So then uh, to touch on all of these steps in the next lectures, we're literally going to be starting on, on the very first steps of, of genome analysis, which will briefly uh, touch on how we prepare the samples uh, before uh, sequencing them and how we sequence uh, this particular uh, genome sample, uh, how we give them as input, let's say, and what is the output, basically? And how do we interpret that output, right? Because the output is not, in most cases, it's not going to be uh, basic ATGCs if we're talking about DNA, but they're going to be in some sort of raw form. And this form can perhaps be, let's say, uh, images, set of images, that is corresponding to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, um, nucleic acid uh, acids, essentially the molecule. It could be electrical signals or it could be a, a, a movie even, right? So then there are some computational techniques that interpret, that essentially translate these raw data to the, to the uh, human readable form, uh, for example, in terms of ATGCs. And then uh, we're going to, uh, cover how we analyze uh, uh, this data, how we translate this data, how we uh, uh, analyze this data, for example, by finding similarities between uh, between the sequencing data that we generate and the uh, 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 representative, let's say, genome of a particular species that we call reference genomes. And basically the algorithms that are used to identify these uh, similarities uh, between a pair of sequences, let's say, uh, and they're essentially the problems. But in general, uh, essentially the goal of almost uh, all genome analysis uh, 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 pipelines, let's say, is to make some scientific discoveries or in general discoveries by analyzing the genome. So this starts with sequencing your data and perhaps mapping that data to somewhere. This could be a reference genome, this could be the, the other sequencing data that we already generated and so on. And then uh, basically figure out some uh, interesting, let's say changes uh, that make up that particular individual, right? And then understand why these changes uh, uh, are appearing in that particular individual so that you can link, for example, those changes to, for example, to, to, to particular disease. And with that, you would be making essential discoveries for that particular individual, or maybe uh, by doing some statistical analysis or even other type of analysis, you're, you could be making some scientific discoveries that uh, 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 were not discovered before. Uh, so essentially we're going to be covering all of, almost all of these steps also in our weekly lectures. Uh, the, I would say, I guess this is the first half, half of the lecture. So we're going to be, this is already uh, starting, right? This is the first lecture uh, right now, which is happening at the moment. So next week, we're going to be delving into more details on, on genome analysis, uh, right? And then we're going to uh, cover 
essentially how uh, we uh, translate the molecules uh, to a data, essentially. So this is going to be provide an overview of DNA sequencing technologies. And then in the next steps, uh, we're going to be covering the algorithms that takes this uh, sequencing data and then does some analysis, for example, the alignment algorithms, uh, uh, also the other efficient algorithms that enables us to facilitate a quick search in a large space of genomic, uh, genome sequencing data. And then also how do we build uh, the or construct the entire genome, right? For example, a reference genome or your or, or your even uh, individual genome by covering the steps in genome and, uh, and assembly. And then we're going to also cover some steps uh, on how we detect uh, some variants uh, in the genome and also how we perform, let's say, uh, uh, analysis for functional uh, uh, genomics purposes. Uh, so in the second half, half of the course, we're going to be essentially covering the works that are already uh, published from our group. So some of these works are already building on top of the steps that we're going to be covering. So now that you already have the knowledge, the basic knowledge in genome analysis, you're going to have this uh, basic understanding of like how we're building on top of, this, of top, top of the previous state of the art work and how we're uh, basically advancing the science by improving uh, one of these directions in genome analysis. So we've been uh, essentially publishing uh, uh, several works in this direction. So there are some works that provide an overview of, uh, of genome analysis and as well as the hardware solutions that can be applied. Also the opportunities uh, that could be uh, applied to achieve fast and accurate genome analysis. So if you want to learn about these, we already provide links uh, of recommended readings in our course page, but you can also uh, basically find the links uh, to these papers uh, from the slides, right? So this is one work essentially uh, covering uh, uh, the steps to accelerate the genome analysis and also the potential steps uh, that can be taken in the future. Uh, this is another example of uh, of using near memory solutions to accelerate uh, genome analysis and also the other applications. Uh, in this work, we are covering how what, what essentially the steps are uh, from essentially uh, preparing the molecules, the sample itself, until the step that we get the answers at the, at the very end, which is finding the variations, mainly the finding the variations in, in genome analysis. So we're covering all of these steps in this particular paper and also the solutions uh, that, that we offer. Uh, uh, this is also a recent work uh, that was presented a few months ago. So this is also an overview uh, paper that we uh, cover uh, many of the um, hardware solutions and also important software solutions in accelerating the genome analysis by co-designing uh, algorithm and architecture. Uh, we also provide an in-depth analysis of uh, one of the key steps in genome analysis, which is uh, read mapping. So this is a paper, I guess, in 111 pages, maybe it's even longer now. Uh, so you can check this essentially to learn more about the, uh, the steps uh, that have been taken, I guess, uh, 1980s since today uh, that enabled us to uh, make quick search, basically, in a large space of genomic data. So doing um, making a quick search is extremely important because otherwise the complexity of algorithms uh, and uh, uh, the space that we're making the search is, is, is extreme. So you, you really need to build some heuristics to facilitate a quick search for, for genome analysis. And even there are some other solutions that make it even faster. For example, before performing alignment, which is one of the uh, computationally costly steps in genome analysis, maybe we can actually filter out some of the data uh, before performing the computation costly uh, solution. So Sneaky Snake is, is uh, one example. Uh, to it. So we've been also designing uh, 
uh, co-designing hardware and software together. So this is a framework uh, that provides uh, uh, an essentially intelligent solution on uh, performing approximate uh, um, uh, string search, which is essentially the core of, of uh, read mapping in genome analysis or read alignment in genome analysis. But approximate string search is also essentially used in other, other applications, other areas than genome analysis. But here we're mainly focusing on the genome analysis tab. But again, this could be applied to, to other domains. And here we're showing how one could design hardware and software together to achieve quick and efficient approximate string search. Uh, we also show in our previous works how we can actually co-design uh, uh, the software with, uh, with, with the storage systems, essentially, right? In order to uh, uh, move the, in order to minimize the um, uh, overhead that is caused by the data moments. So the idea is that if you can design efficient storage systems where we can analyze the genome uh, and as well as let's say uh, 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 keep the store, uh, keep the data, large data in the same storage system. So the idea is essentially we could minimize the data moment uh, and also minimize the energy spent uh, for that data moment to achieve efficient uh, and quick uh, genome analysis. So GenStore is one example of it. So you can see the example of like how to design a storage system to achieve that. Uh, so we also have another work uh, that uh, focuses on, on accelerating base calling and read mapping uh, in processing in memory. Uh, so the idea is that, uh, again, to minimize the data moment, uh, one could essentially merge two uh, computation cost uh, uh, steps in genome analysis, which is base calling and read mapping, and intelli intelligently design uh, the hardware, the processing in memory hardware, so that uh, we do, let's say, less work for read mapping. And the idea here is that uh, essentially the read mapping could give some feedback to the base caller saying that uh, essentially we don't really have to base call uh, everything based on the chunk of data that we already analyzed uh, so that we can essentially reduce the workload of base calling and, and, and read mapping altogether while also minimizing the data movement using processing in memory. Uh, we also have uh, published uh, uh, um, essentially a core work that accelerates uh, sequence to graph mapping. Uh, so we don't really necessarily uh, map the reads or sequencing data to a linear reference genome. Uh, the other idea is basically uh, how to construct the uh, uh, a population, let's say, uh, uh, or representative, a good representative of population using a graph structure. So linear reference genome is mainly missing that information. And the idea is a graph can actually construct or represent that uh, 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 essentially common variations uh, in a particular population. And it's very useful basically to make um, accurate analysis, accurate genome analysis. Although graphs are very useful, the operations in, uh, to, to basically uh, find similarities between a sequencing data and a graph is very costly. And we're minimizing those costs, again, by uh, co-designing hardware and software together when mapping the sequencing data to graph. And Sagram is, is, is one seminal work in this direction. Uh, we also uh, show how we can, how one can uh, design DRAM, let's say, uh, to uh, perform, to enable processing in memory for genome analysis and green filter is, is, is one work for it. And uh, this is also another work that provides a framework, let's say, uh, that uses real processing in memory system um, to implement uh, one of the closest steps in genome analysis, which is sequence alignment. So it's a very good, basically example, how we can use real processing in memory uh, systems uh, uh, to perform sequence alignment. Uh, so as well as the hardware solutions, we also have uh, important software solutions that can also be 
uh, that can also essentially um, help uh, 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 improve the current state of the hardware software code design. And one of when well, one of these works is is Blend. So Blend enables uh, approximate uh, finding the approximate matches of sequences with a very quick uh, uh, lookup rather than using uh, costly algorithms. Uh, so you can check this uh, uh, paper if you want to learn uh, more about it. So the, uh, we, we're also seeing new applications in genome analysis. For example, uh, we also see there are now frequent updates to reference genomes and that comes with a huge cost also in uh, realigning or remapping the reads that are already mapped to uh, previous reference genomes to the new reference genomes as well. And the idea is how can we actually uh, uh, not do the same work, right? Because the updated reference genome will also share some uh, common information or, or the same information with the previous genome. So the idea is how can we detect this shared information so that we can minimize the work uh, uh, when remapping the reads to any reference genome and A-lift is one example of, of such a work. Um, so there are also new uh, frontiers in genome analysis. One uh, direction is uh, essentially uh, is, is to analyze the raw sequencing data without even translating them to ATGCs. So this means that as soon as the data comes from the sequencing device, it usually doesn't come in the form of ADGCs. And the question is, can we still analyze that data? And the question is yes. So we're showing this in the raw hash paper uh, that we're analyzing the nanopore uh, signals, which are essentially the electrical raw signals. Uh, we're analyzing them and making also some decisions in real time. So while uh, the nanopore sequencing device provides the data at a certain throughput, let's say in real time, Raw hash is also uh, able to analyze that data at the same speed, even faster uh, uh, than, the, than, the, than the data generation speed uh, to make some decisions, basically. And based on these decisions, we can even also make decisions regarding uh, the sequencing. So we can even stop the sequencing process in order to reduce the uh, uh, sequencing time and cost based on the analysis. So this is particularly an interesting direction, and this was presented at ISMB CCB this year. So you can uh, uh, use this QR code or links to, to read more about it. So we've been also improving raw hash. Uh, we recently released a newer version of raw hash, raw hash two, and and this is on archive. Uh, there are also other ideas uh, that we try to apply. Uh, before base calling, and this is one work that essentially tries to uh, minimize the amount of, uh, reduce the workload of base calling, let's say, by filtering some of the data uh, before fully base calling them. And target call is, is one example of it. Uh, we've been also uh, organizing workshops and also giving talks in this direction. So this is a very recent workshop that we organized in collaboration with Recomp this year in 2023. Uh, so you can, uh, all the talks, by the way, were live streamed and you can use this link uh, to, to basically watch the talks. And also you can visit this link uh, to get information about the talks. So you can also watch several of the videos that we've been, we've been giving uh, uh, for a few years. If you want to learn more about accelerating genome analysis or genome analysis in general, uh, you can also check these talks. Uh, for example, this is another talk uh, on accelerating genome analysis. Uh, again, more talks, again, on Recomp and then several venues, uh, as well as also more software-focused talks such as uh, this is the talk of raw hash at ISMB. Uh, so if you want to learn more about those, you can you can check these links. Uh, and of course, there are also other links to 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 the computer architecture courses that we've been giving in the previous years. So you can always watch these uh, lectures uh, to learn more about the research that we've been doing uh, so far. So with that, uh, I believe I covered uh, the most of the topics. Uh, uh, regarding this 
uh, course and also as well as the introduction to the course um, and also the scope let's say of 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 the of the course that that um, that uh, we're going to be offering this semester um, so I believe with that I'll end the uh, live stream but I want to quickly check whether there is any uh, uh, question on YouTube uh, if not I'll I'll finish the uh, lecture I'll quickly check okay so I don't see any questions uh, done with that uh, thanks everyone for for your attention and I'll see you next week uh, with a more in-depth uh, uh, basically uh, details in-depth analysis of genome uh, analysis uh, for the next week.